bit of this show is brought to you by Safety FM. The following program is rated MALSV. It contains strong language, sexual situations, and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. Finally, show with the balls and call it like it is. Rated R Safety Show on Safety FM. Countdown to audio torture. The Rated R Safety Show starts in three, two, one. Ah, let the eardrum pain begin. Forget the corporate bullshit. This is the Rated R Safety Show with your host, Dr. Uh, it doesn't matter who the host is. Well, 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 it does not matter who the host is. Today's Thursday, July the 15th of 2021, day 196th of the year and only 160. Oh, should I say 169? Or should I say 169.8? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe we won't be able to get through. Anyways, 169 days left to go, uh, before, you know, the end of the shit show here. So yes, we are on the downward trend. 22 is now not that far away. It, it, just imagine here in, the, in less than four days, we'll be hit saying, hey, at two, day 200 and change. So that'll be kind of some fun stuff. Anyway, so there you go. We are broadcasting live from the Safety FM studios in Orlando, Florida, coming across the multiverse of Safety FM. So did you do cool stuff in the overnight? Did you do some fun things? Did you live life at large? You know, all that kind of fun stuff. Anyways, as we are broadcasting here at Safety FM, we're also broadcasting there with with our with our friends and our colleagues. Radio. So there you go. We're broadcasting on Radio Big FM. They're a music station that lets us hang out and do some other stuff inside of there. So that's kind of fun um, being able to do some of that. Uh, yeah, a lot of shows happen on there live and in living color as you get to hang out over there on that side of the multiverse. So let's start talking right away on the things that are trending. And this will be interesting as we start off our lovely morning. A Penn State professor singled out an average white guy during a lecture and use him as an example of how the skin color... Uh, uh, benefits him over other students, even with similar backgrounds and achievements. So this was making the overnights. This was definitely hitting around and all that kind of fun stuff. So I think that what we're going to do here is we'll bring, we'll turn around and uh, bring in the audio for this thing. This way we can take a listen to this together. I would love to get your viewpoint on what is going on. Now, keep in mind, our phone lines are open at 866 nine. I can't even think. 866-930-SFM1. You can shoot over a text message if you're so inclined to do so. But take a listen to this on what the professor had to say out of Penn State. And let's kind of go through it. And what that means is the following. I just take the average white guy in class, whoever it is. It doesn't really matter, dude. Dude, this guy right here. <laughs> look, stand up, bro. What's your name, bro? Russell. Russell. This, look at Russell here. Russell has Sean this is the I'm making your argument for you right look at Russell right here just doesn't matter what he does if I match him up with the black a black guy in class or a brown guy even but let me just stay with a black guy in class who's just like him has the same GPA looks like him walks like him talks like him acts in the similar way has been involved in the same groups on campus is it takes the same leadership positions does whatever it is if I match him up against that person, we send him in to the same jobs upon graduation. You've all done, he's done everything he's supposed to do. And the person I match him with has done everything he has been supposed to do. He's supposed to do at Penn State, right? They tell you, right? They do, do it, man. Go see your advisors and go do this and go do internships and do it. And if you did this, if Russell did the same things, it's just the next per somebody else I find in this classroom, and they go through four years here exactly together. Russell has a benefit of having white skin. So what do you think there? Uh, so that's actually coming out of a clip out of a Penn State class. And I will tell you, it's kind of an interesting um, setup. Number one, interesting because of what's being communicated. And then interesting as well, because there's multiple cameras and multiple camera angles, and there's a plethora i mean a whole crap load of people inside of there um inside of the class itself as they're taking a listen to what is going on and i will tell you that the kid that gets pulled out of the crowd 
kind of has a, like a shock feeling all of a sudden when he starts getting into listening to uh, what is going on. So what's your thoughts there as you take a listen to this? What is your thoughts as you uh, take a gander around and all that kind of fun stuff? What's your general feeling? Because keep in mind, too, that this is now being taught in schools K through 12. Some people are arguing that this should not be taught in schools. Some people are arguing that this should be taught in schools. What do you think? What is your thought process when it comes to it? Is the information correct? Is the information incorrect? Because that's going to be the thing. It's the way that we communicate about things is how we'll be able to move forward. So is this communication correct in your point of view or incorrect? I guess that's some stuff that we have to start thinking about as we're talking this morning. Um, of course, it is only seven minutes past the top of the hour, but we're already here. We're going to hang out with our friends from Feature Story News for the next few moments. They, they always have some things to say. <laughs> they always have a lot of things to say. So let's go ahead and bring them on and see what they have to say. We'll get that moving right here on the Rated R Safety Show. Here is the news on the Rated R Safety Show. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. Cuba's lifted import duties on medicines and food temporarily after days of demonstrations. It was one of the key demands of protesters amid an economic crisis in the country. At least six people are dead and dozens are missing or trapped after flooding in western Germany. India and China have agreed to try and put an end to the border standoff between the two countries. The foreign ministers met on the sidelines of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit. Ishan Gerg reports from New Delhi. India and China say a prolongation of the existing situation is not in the interest of either side. Both have also agreed on calling a meeting between senior military commanders from both sides. The two nations had agreed to completely disengage from friction points in the Himalayan region, but the last few months have seen heavy troop deployments to the contentious border area. Experts say the nuclear neighbours do not trust each other and need to scale back their armies to build trust. They also believe that high-level political dialogue is necessary, especially since several rounds of military and diplomatic dialogues have already failed to resolve the border conflict. Ishan Garg, New Delhi. China will send its largest ever delegation to an overseas Olympics. It comprises 777 people, as Patrick Fock reports from Beijing. Female athletes make up the bulk of those gunning for glory in Tokyo. 298 have qualified for the Games, more than double the 133 male athletes from China. Reports have also highlighted the diversity of the Chinese team. There are 33 athletes of Manchu, Mongol, Hui and other ethnicities. China's biggest ever delegation on home soil was at the Beijing Games in 2008, comprising 1,099 people. It's eyeing gold in table tennis, badminton, gymnastics, weightlifting, shooting and diving, according to state media. Patrick Falk, Beijing. A major review for the UK government is calling for a tax on sugary and salty food products and the prescription of vegetables. It says people need to eat less sugar, salt and meat to save lives, protect the National Health Service and the environment. The controversial national food strategy recommends some of the money raised by taxes should be spent on expanding free school meals. Community Secretary Robert Jenrick says it's just a set of recommendations. I think you have to be very cautious before putting burdens on members of the public, particularly those on lower incomes. We're going to consider it carefully and set out our national food strategy in the coming months, which will address some of these issues. I don't want to make life more difficult for people on low incomes. But as I say, we're not going to comment on the individual recommendations on the morning that the report has been released. It's going to be something we'll think carefully about and set out our views later in the year. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks. When President Emmanuel Macron earlier this week told the French people that he may soon mandate COVID-19 vaccines in a bid to overcome the hesitancy of so many of his countrymen to sign up for them, the response was immediate. The website French people used to sign up for jabs was overwhelmed and crashed. But equally, the president's opponents accused him of overreach by saying that within a month, anyone without proof of vaccination, recovery from COVID-19, 
or a negative test will be barred from restaurants, cafes, trains and planes. Wednesday saw demonstrations against the president's plan, but reporter Lisa Louis in Paris says pretty small ones. Well, there have been a few thousand in Paris and about 20,000 in, in roughly 20 cities across France. So it's not huge. You know, this is the country of protests and when you've got, when you've got big demonstrations, you've got a million or two taking to the streets. The government feels that uh, the vaccination campaign really needs to speed up and that's why they're putting so much pressure on everybody because, you know, amongst those that haven't gotten vaccinated, yeah, there's a large share. They want to wait a bit longer to see what kind of side effects the vaccine can have. President Macron has gone further than any other Western leader in claiming that living with COVID requires citizens of a democracy, if necessary, to be ordered to get vaccinated. With FSN Spotlight, I'm Simon Marks. And to recap the top stories, Cuba's lifted import duties on medicines and food temporarily after days of demonstrations. At least six people are dead and dozens missing or trapped after flooding in western Germany. India and China have agreed to try and put an end to a border standoff. And a major review for the UK government is calling for a tax on sugary and salty food products and the prescription of vegetables. That's the latest feature story news. Ollie Barrett reporting. Listen to our host of the Rated R Safety Show. Self-implode on our airwaves, only on Safety FM. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. You know how sometimes you're out and about and sometimes you have to access a report, maybe your bank account, maybe something that's important to you, but you don't want other people to be able to access it? I know you're probably sitting there for a moment going, well, why don't you just go into incognito mode and use that instead? Well, let me tell you something real quick. Incognito mode does not hide your activity. It doesn't matter what mode you use or how many times you clear your browser's history. Your internet service provider can still see every single website you visited and that's why even when i'm at home i never go online without using express vpn it doesn't matter who your internet provider is it can be verizon comcast or even at&t the isp in the u.s can legally sell your information to ad companies express vpn is an app that reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers so your isp can't see the sites that you visit express vpn also keeps all of your information secure by encrypting 100% of your data with the most powerful encryption available. Most of the times I don't even realize I have ExpressVPN on. It runs seamlessly in the background and is so easy to use. All you have to do is tap one button and you're protected. ExpressVPN is available on all of your devices, phones, computers, even your smart TV. So there's no excuse for you not to be using it. Protect your online activity today with the VPN rated number one by CNET and Wired. Wired. Visit my exclusive link at expressvpn.com slash safety and you can get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S VPN.com slash safety. ExpressVPN.com slash safety to learn more. I spend a lot of time in the backyard and I'm the center of attention at summer barbecues. In 96, I made some of the tastiest s'mores. And in 09, it was me, your backyard fire pit, that accidentally started a wildfire when a summer breeze carried one of my embers into some dry brush. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. My name is Lola Silvestri, and I'm going to be 95 this year. I was very independent. I fell, and I had to have meals on wheels. America, let's do lunch. 
One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. <laughs> hey, everyone. Let's all stop what we're doing and take a moment. You see, every moment can be kind of special. But they can be loud moments, goofy moments, dorky moments. It doesn't matter. Because every time dads like us take a moment like that to spend with our kids, well, it's pretty momentous. So let's take a moment to make a moment. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. This show is almost as enjoyable as hearing the sound of the toilet flush. Rated R Safety Show on Safety FM. There you go. A lot of stuff going on, of course, first thing in the morning. At least first thing in the morning in the U.S. Eastern Time or whatever the hell uh, we, we're located. Anyway, so let's get into some news and talk about some of the craziness that is going around inside of this part of the planet. The number of new COVID-19 infections has risen in nearly every state in the U.S. as the Delta variant spreads. Over the last seven days, the U.S. has recorded the average of 19,455 new cases per day. That's up 47.5% from the previous week, according to the data from John Hopkins University. But worth noting, deaths continues to drop nationwide. So it's an interesting twist in regards to how that Delta variant is actually working. So we'll, well, I guess we'll see more as things do come about. That's kind of how it goes. Yeah. Uh, so let's start talking about some other things. Two men were found dead inside of the luxury rooms of, uh, hold on, luxury hotel rooms at the famous Versace Mansion. Miami Beach police got a call yesterday afternoon from housekeeping uh, stating that they had uh, discovered two dead bodies. The discovery comes on the eve of the anniversary of the death of Gianni Versace, uh, who was shot and killed by a gunman, Andrew Kuninen. Back in July 15th of 1997, it is unclear if the deaths have something in, in, to do with in the connection of the anniversary. The deaths are under investigation. So that's something. You kind of have a big profile death that occurred multiple years ago inside of there. What are we looking at? 26. And now, now all of a sudden, you have something the day before what would be considered the anniversary, which is kind of a weird thing. I don't know if I would call it a celebration, but something to talk about from that period of time. Anyways, let's continue talking. A London dentist is warning people against using mouthwash right after brushing their teeth. Really? Oral expert Anna Peterson sent a warning in TikTok clip uh, that nearly got 2 million views. In the following video, Peterson explained that toothpaste, you hold on toothpaste you brush your teeth with has around a hundred or 1450 ppm fluoride which is ideal concentration to protect your teeth against sugar sugars in foods and drinks consumed mouthwash meanwhile has 220 ppm fluoride so by rinsing your mouth right after brushing your teeth the majority of the high concentration fluoride from toothpaste is being washed away peterson concluded that her warning is by telling to to think mouthwash is a palate cleanser rather than a nightcap so hold on are you telling me not to use mouthwash now um i i guess that's one thing that uh we can talk about because that's going to be the interesting part if I start using mouthwash for oral care and all of a sudden I'm using it as a palate cleaner, does this mean I'm doing this shit before I actually eat something? Because let's, let's be realistic. I use that, uh, that, that brand, that one brand that has the dark brown stuff. <laughs> yeah, not the flavored one. Uh, and, you know, some people can't last 30 seconds with it. So it'll be interesting to see how that actually goes um, in that particular regards. Anyways, what do you got here, Mr. Pozo? One of our best friends was supposed to be the second victim. Oh, oh, that's scary. That's scary to hear. Anyways, let's get into some stock news as we are talking this morning. Let's bring in Mr. Johnny Smalls and let him tell us what's going on with the beat inside of the market because that's always interesting. 
Here's your Market Beat Minute for Thursday, July 15th, 2021. Equity markets wobbled again Wednesday as hotter-than-expected inflation data capped gains driven by better-than-expected earnings. Reports from the big banks reveal ongoing improvement with the consumer, but that news was overshadowed by inflation fears. The Producer Price Index, a leading indicator of consumer inflation, rose 1% from the previous month in an acceleration that drove year-over-year inflation to 7.3%. The news was compounded by testimony from Fed Chief Jerome Powell, who says that inflation has accelerated unexpectedly and that high inflation could linger for months. Even so, the Fed Chief says there's no expectation for raising interest rates anytime soon. The next big test for the market will come over the next two days, with the release of several important economic data points. You can get the inside track from Wall Street's brightest minds delivered directly to your inbox every day at MarketBeatMinute.com. Okay, thank you, Johnny Smalls, for that one. Of course, like I always say, if you want to hear more about what John got to giving on, you can go to his show, The John and Heidi Show. Uh, it does air on RadioBig.fm between 2 and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, just in case you wanted to know that. Also, so let's talk about what we found on our side. Stock markets finished mixed on Wednesday as the Dow rose 44 points and the S&P added 5 points and the NASDAQ dipped 32 points. Early in the session, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was uh, trading above 35,000 uh, points for the first time ever. Inflation results for June indicated the consumer goods became 0.9% more costly than the last 12 months and has seen the largest increase of inflation since 2008. Apple surged more than 2.4% to the new record higher, uh, new record higher during the Wednesday session. This came on the news that the tech company asked its supplier to increase iPhone production by 20%. Think about that. Increasing iPhone production by 20%. You're already seeing all kinds of iPhones. So is this a sign of what the iPhone 13 might actually bring to the table that the other ones do not? So that's going to be the interesting part. The lumber crisis is far from over, by the way. The, uh, despite a recent drop in lumber prices, Jerry Howard, CEO of the National Association of Home Builders, warns that the lumber has been underpriced for about 10 years and the prices are never going back to levels seen earlier uh, before the pandemic howard also stated that if he, if the supply does not catch up to the demand prices will climb even higher worth noting the high prices of lumbers has added such as thirty six thousand dollars to the cost of a building of a new home so think about that you know i have to tell you i keep on seeing these metal boxes that people are putting together that you could uh uh, throw up. I don't mean like barf. I talk about throw up with less than an hour. Um, it might start looking like something pretty to do. You can probably get one. For, I think it's like 400 square feet for $50,000 already includes a refrigerator, uh, the, the HVAC. And then of course the washer and dryer. So you're set to go. And when they start coming out with the self-sustaining one, then we might start having a different conversation. <laughs> That's for sure. You are listening to something magical. <laughs> You're Not. listening to the Rated R Safety Show. Okay, so take a listen to this. When a naked California woman had been to, had to be rescued on Tuesday after she got wedged between two concrete walls, workers at a nearby outer shop heard a woman yelling for help but were unable to locate her. One of the employees phoned the police who found the woman wedged upside down, unable to reach her. She uh, she was trapped in a space uh, in a space less than a foot wide. Firefighters had to cut it open, the concrete wall. After two hours, the woman was uh, freed. It is unclear on how the woman got stuck there. Any injuries she sustained are also unknown. Officials said that more details would be released once they are once they do become available. Now, there is a video of it at... No, I'm joking. There is no video. But how crazy is that? How do you get wedged naked? How did you end up upside down, wedged naked in a foot of concrete on each side? Or between a foot of concrete on each side? I mean, that's not a lot of body broom if you start thinking about it. 30 centimeters. There you go. Anyways, let's continue talking. A kidney was transplanted into the wrong uh, patient at an Ohio hospital earlier this month. Oh, my. Talk about the lottery failure of the vaccine uh, lottery. And now all of a sudden you're getting transplanted with the wrong kidney. In a statement to the Post, the official said the two employees have been put on a leave as the hospital investigate how the organ ended up inside the wrong person. 
Well, it sounds like there was only one uh, one barrier to, to, between what the hell could go wrong and what actually happened. The person who received the kidney was thankful, <laughs> thankfully uh, compatible with the donated organ and is doing well. But the patient who was supposed to get the kidney has now had their surgery delayed. Something tells me there's a lawsuit coming one way, shape or form. Just kind of how the what things work out. But it's interesting on how this is. How do you have this? Was there only a single point of failure? Was the failure caused because there was no safeguards in place? Because think about that. A full kidney transplant. You had to cut it out of somebody or actually have it. I mean, maybe you didn't cut it out. You already had the damn thing. And all of a sudden you cut it into the wrong person. I would like to know what the person was going in for. Like, seriously, like what was the surgery that the that the person got the kidney ended up was supposed to have. I mean, that's going to be an interesting conversation, something to think about. Duh. Okay, overdose deaths have skyrocketed over the last year. According to the new data from the CDC, more than 93,000 Americans passed away due to an overdose and an increase of of more than 20,000 from 2019. Dr. Nora Volkoff, director of the National Institute on Drug Abuse, called the data chilling, saying that the pandemic created a devastating collision of health crises Crises or crises in America. The data suggests that the emotional toll of social distancing, school closures, and isolation resulted in the surge of overdose deaths. Now, let's be realistic for a moment. And let's start talking about that. Because there were a lot of people that were turning to the wrong things. I mean, we didn't know what the hell was going on. And to some extent, we can still say that some people don't know what the hell is going on. With the pan. And there was the freak out moment. Was it like the world coming to an end? And of course, you know, when you start watching all kinds of weird ass media, it can become a scary place. You know that. I know that. It's not something that, you know, it's uncommon. Duh. Duh. So something to think about. But overdoses were on the on the incline. Not something that you really want to be proud of, but I guess a lot of people were turning to either the bottle or drugs. So I don't know. It's kind of a weird spot to be in. Anyways, a 78-year-old woman, our grandmother from Albuquerque, is entering her first strength competition, Linda Patterson. What the hell's up with the Patterson name today? Who, according to her trainer, could barely lift herself when she began training a few years ago, will compete on July the 17th in the Masters 4 category of the Natural Athlete Strengths Associated Summer Nationals Meet in Roswell, New Mexico. I think I need to make a trip out to New Mexico. I've been saying that for quite some time now. She will show off her best squad bench press at a deadlift in the 70-year-old and older category. I would like for people to feel like they could do it and that it is a great way for your mind and your body to move on. I would just like to inspire people to go out for it and just try it. She said to KOAT reporter in a recent segment. Well, good for her. I hope everything goes successful. It'll be interesting to see what comes about out of that. That's for sure. Anyways, wildfires continue to ravage the West Coast. Close to 70 fires have have burned nearly a million acres while forcing hundreds from their homes. Droughts in the western states continue to be a contributing factor as well as the lack of fuel for jets that are <laughs> that are at hand to provide aerial relief. The National Inter- Interagency of Fire Center reported this week that almost 34,000 fires have been bur- have burned more than 2 million acres across the country since January. So definitely an ongoing problem there. I really think that the person to talk to about this is Professor Ivan Puppolity out of Alabama. He would always have some good insight in regards to what is going on, and he would definitely be able to tell us some strategies and some thoughts behind that. Maybe that maybe that's a call we make at some point during this week in regards to talking to him. Anyways, let's get into our main story because I feel like it's close to that time. So let's do that right now. Here is our main story on the Rated R Safety Show. Okay, so let's start talking. You know, we get into the world of the weird, the world to the wild, the world of whatever, of whatever we want to talk about as you and I hang out in this lovely morning. 
It is 30 minutes past the crowd, past the top of the hour as you and I are hanging out. And so if you took a look this morning, is the issue communication is really what we wanted to talk about. We wanted to talk about this because here's the thing. If you work inside of an organization, which most most of us do, you know that there is a time there is a time stamp there there is a timeline there is a time that we turn around and do some interesting things there is a time that we do some stuff that might be out of the ordinary for some but good for others but i want you to think about this there seems to be sometimes this dead drop this death valley this dead valley of where communication goes to die. Where you've set everything up, you think you have the perfect slides, you think you have the perfect communication devices, you think that you're able to give this world what they need to know. You've thought about it in theory. You thought about it and you did it and you put it to practice and now it's time to go back and teach. Now it's time to go back and make sure that you're able to communicate this. You have the perfect presentation, if there is such a thing. You have the perfect PowerPoint because, you know, some people like to do death by PowerPoint. You have the perfect poster. You have the perfect email template typography and you're ready to shoot this thing across. You're ready to go out there and make it your manifesto. You're ready to make it the thing that people are going to know about you within the organization. And you start. And you start delivering this great information. You start delivering everything out there you start sending it out you do the presentation you're sweating profusely as you're doing this you're getting the info out there and everything's done you've done everything you thought you were going to be able to do in regards and how you communicated it and all of a sudden nothing changed nothing happened everything remained exactly the same Sound familiar? Let me explain what's going on. Here's where we're having a lot of misconceptions lately. And this applies to me as well. So I don't want you to think that it's like, oh, let's preach from, let's preach from the pupit. Let's do that today. Now, let's talk about this. A lot of times organizations do not have a communication problem. They have a problem with comprehension because listen, you can communicate a thing a thousand times or a thousand different ways, a million different ways. Okay. Maybe that's a little bit exaggerated, but sometimes it's not really on how it's communicated. It's the comprehension level of people receiving the information because let's do this. Like right now, if you're listening to me on the radio, you're more than likely doing something else at the same time. If you are watching me on a video stream, you're more than likely hanging out watching me. You might have a phone. You might have a device around you. You might even have me off to the corner. But if you want a full engagement and interaction, the technology pieces have to be limited on how you're actually interacting at that particular time. If it's an in-person event, unless you're communicating via technology. But are they comprehending also at the same time the information that you're providing to them? Because if I start using big words, which some people like to do with their communication and their presentations, is that going to be a value to the people that are listening? Now, one can argue of if I'm speaking to the C-suite, I should communicate in this form. Yes. If I'm talking to middle management, I should communicate in that form. Yes. If I'm talking to the line level, I should communicate in this form. And you can say yes to the whole thing. You can say no to the whole thing. You can say I communicate exactly the same way across. All that stuff can be done. But here's the gig. The comprehension has to be there. This is why we constantly talk about meeting people where they're at. 
I will tell you, I get to hang out with academics. I get to hang out with people from the line level. I get to hang out with people inside of the C-suite. And I will tell you, some of the best academics that I have seen out there have been able to take academic stuff, and I'll say stuff, and convert it over to basic conversation. Some might even say baby food. Old movie, going back for a moment, Training Day. Explain this to me like I was a four-year-old. If you take the basic approach and break down the information that you're disseminating to a comprehension level that even a child could actually understand it, some people might be offended. It's okay. But what you're trying to accomplish is that your communication is being transposed across the organization. Think about that for a moment. Maybe it's not the way that the communication is being sent out. Maybe it's the way that the people need to comprehend it. If you break it down to its lowest level, life might become easier inside of your organization. Life might become easier depending on how you're, what you're trying to do. Take a look at it that way. But you know how it goes. What the hell do I know? It's the guy behind a microphone. Oops! What did he just say? We at Safety FM don't always agree with the viewpoints of our hosts and guests. Now back to real safety talk on Safety FM. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the home of real safety talk. You're listening to Safety FM. We'll be right back. So I interrupt this very important show to discuss this important matter with you. And here's what I want to share. You know that for years I have been telling you on this show that I don't sleep too great. Well, over the last few months, I've actually acquired a Helix Sleep mattress. And it has changed the way that I sleep entirely. Listen, I have to tell you, for years I have struggled day in and day out or night in and night out on how I sleep. But ever since I went to Helix Sleep and took the sleep quiz, it has changed my way of sleeping. All you need to do to be able to encounter this luxury in your home, just go to helixsleep.com slash safety. That's helixsleep.com slash safety. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you with a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix Sleep is offering up to $200 off of all orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash safety. That's helixsleep.com slash safety for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Dear John, I'm leaving. Uncontrolled high blood pressure is serious and I can quit whenever I want. Why can't we get back to when you checked on me? I don't want to leave. But remember, when I quit... You quit. Sincerely, your heart. Listen to your heart and don't let it quit on you. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range today. For help keeping yours at a healthy range, text PRESSURE to 97779. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio. Take one. Behold the angry giant. Try it again, Alberto. Behold the angry giant. Perfect. Good luck tonight. Behold the angry giant. Yay! Read me another one, Dad. This is WWE superstar Alberto Del Rio. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to sell all your belongings and live in a commune. These dungarees belong to all of us now, Tom. You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. We need a new stuntman! You just need FeedThePig.org. Don't get left behind. Get tips and tools at FeedThePig.org. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Oh, 
Okay, there you go. 40 minutes past the top of the hour. This is two beers and a good scent. Yeah, not a joke. This is from Soup. The song's readily available on Spotify and iTunes. So there you go. If you want to take a listen to this one. So there you go. Let's get you back into some other stuff. I don't know. I'm always kind of hung up on some of this music stuff that we do. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Anyways, 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 let's get, let's get moving. If not, I'll sit here and listen to a song the whole time. And then be like, oh, yeah, we, we ran out of time. We ran out of time. Well, I, before I screw this up, because I definitely screwed this up yesterday. You know what I forgot to do? We didn't get motivated. I didn't let Johnny Smalls come back and take over. So let's do Motivation Minute right now. The Motivation Minute is courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. Today's quote has been submitted by Chris. Margaret Cho said, Love is the big booming beat which covers up the noise of hate. That's a great quote. Thanks for sharing this, Chris. I actually had a chance to visit with Margaret Cho on our radio program. She's a super nice young lady. And this quote shows that she's pretty sharp, too. There are times that you need to love a little more to drown out the other noise in your life. Sometimes that can be hard, too. Especially when the person or the people you're showing love to can easily show you disrespect in return. That's no fun. And trust me, I've been there. Here's my advice, though. Don't let their actions change who you are. You just keep being you. This has been today's Motivation Minute, courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. I'm John Small. Thanks for listening. Your favorite motivational quotes can be submitted for upcoming programs at MotivationMinute.org. Yeah, definitely love me some Johnny Smalls. Love the Motivation Minute, that is for sure. Thanks, John, for that one. I really do appreciate it. Let's get into some more stuff real quick. The writing is on the paper. Handwriting is significantly better than typing or watching videos when it comes to learning to read, according to a study. Researchers at the John Hopkins University, you can see that I'm coming up on John Hopkins University, apparently, had participants learning the Arabic alphabet while they split it into three different learning types, writers, typers, and video watchers. Writer, typers, and video watchers. At the end of the study, after the, so many as six sessions, all the study participants recognized the letters but made a few mistakes when tested. But the writers groups reached the level of proficiency faster than the other groups, some in just two sessions. The researchers say that just because the writing by hand combines what is being learned about the letters and their shapes and sounds with how they are written which leads to fuller true learning although the study participants were adults they are they're finding that they're applicable to school children as many classrooms have replaced penmanship with tablets and laptops still most of us have i've learned um in the last five years has been how to youtube videos that's probably the thing that i've learned the most and i'm pretty sure that i've completely been distracted while learning in any of those other ways. I'm just saying that just for the sake of of talking about it for sure. Duh. Anyways, let's continue. Rooms for improvement. The Hilton Hotel chain has announced that they will only perform housekeeping services for guests upon request. And experts see it as a growing trend in the hospitality industry. As hotel stays plummeted in 2020, the height of during the height of the pandemic, daily housekeeping was once the fir- first services to be cut, but even travel uh, revived daily room tidying is not uh, coming back in full force and guests don't seem to mind as of august of 2020 survey found that almost two-thirds of travelers feel that housekeeping is unnecessary and many hotels are also considering cutting other services including free breakfast uh hold on free breakfast why would you cut that that seems to be necessary because it is not free. It is included with the price of what the hell I'm paying. Of course, uh, I'm the type of person who, who would also ask if new new rooms each day just so I don't have to make my bed. That would be something. It's funny because housekeeping services at my place stopped a long time ago. But that's a whole other that's a whole other conversation. Let's not even get into that. Who knows what kind of trouble I'm going to get into now for saying that one. That's for sure. We at Safety FM are not responsible for what this idiot behind the microphone is saying. 
He is trying to be entertaining. Radio R Safety Show. Okay, so who influences the influencers? Have you ever thought about that? Instagram influencers who don't clearly state if they've edited photos, which uh, our advertisements could be uh, fined or imprisoned in Norway. This is not a joke. A new law also applies to ad posts on other social media platforms like Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat. A new label designed to, or before Norwegian's Ministry of Children and Family Affairs will have to be added to ad posts and have been altered for someone's shape, size, or skin. This would include the common practice of an influence advertising a product, including photos edited to make their lips look bigger, muscles enhanced, or making themselves look slimmer or larger in certain areas. It hasn't yet been decided when the law will come into effect. Ah, boom. Kendall Jenner has just canceled her trip to Norway. No, I'm just joking as I say that. I've got the feeling the Kardashians are about to start looking drastically different in Norway, that's for sure. I've also seen some of their um, editing jobs. Believe me, there is no need for a label. So let's talk about that for a moment. And let's kind of take the serious approach. Here's the thing, and I will talk about this all the time, especially when I have the opportunity to. But people are so in love with social media and they see uh, the things that are on social media and believe that everything's real. Think about this for a moment. Think about the last time that you looked at an influencer and something went wrong. And I'm talking about a good 90 to 95 percent of them. Talk about this. Think about this for a moment. When was the last time you saw that? It's not something that's common. You hear about the perfect life. They envision, I am at the party in Las Vegas. I am in the party at Dubai. I'm at this great place. I'm at this great restaurant. When when do they go to a shitty restaurant? When does something go wrong? I mean, don't get me wrong. I would love for everyone here to have the perfect life. But that's not real. The perfect life doesn't exist. Success is not going to make you happy. Being happy will make you successful. Think about that. And I will tell you, social media does, is not realistic. There's so much fakeness that goes on there. And I know it's kind of a weird, it's a weird approach on me saying this. Because depending on where you're hanging out with me, you could be seeing me on social media. And we've never envisioned or pretended to be at the perfect place at the perfect time. I I won't say, yes, I'm in downtown L.A. I'm in downtown New York. City. Let me make sure that I'm clear. But you you get the gist here. The fakeness needs to be addressed. Because kids can be influenced by what they see online. I mean, I will tell you, this has to be one of the most difficult times in life when it comes to this duality. Because you're living kind of this double life. You have this social media frame of the life you live. And then you have the real world that you live. But how do you want to portray your digital self? I think a lot about that Matrix movie about when Neo makes it into that room that there's nothing in it and he's hanging out with Morpheus and he says, you are seeing a representation of your digital self. And I think that a lot of us do that in social media. Not every time is perfect. That's why I love doing this live show. You see the screw ups, you hear the screw ups for sure. It's not perfect. And that's the great thing about it. There are failures that occur. But why isn't that people are willing to talk about those things when it comes to the world of social media? Safety never sounded so terrible. Rated R Safety Show. Anyways, let's continue talking about some other things going on inside of the world real quick as we are hanging out. We're going to skip the swamp because never like talking about that. No winner for Tuesday night's Mega Million Drawing. Friday's drawing will be for a $117 million jackpot. Or an $83.6 million cash payout. Boy, does that sound good for some. So let's continue. Let's continue, continue. 
What is this? Jennifer Carpenter will be returning for the 10 episode limited series of the revival of Dexter. Sorry for throwing that in there, but I think people need to know that. Uh, on Showtime, Dexter starring Michael C. Hall aired for eight seasons, 2006 to 2013. And the original series, Carpenter played Dexter's foster sister, Deborah, a homicide detective who used her brother's skills to solve murders. So there you go. Uh, just some info in there. I know I should have probably brought that on to the, to the other show that I'm about to start here in the next few minutes, but hey, I figured I'd throw that in. Let's talk about some things that happened back on this date. Back in nine, let's see, in 2016, Stranger Things, think about this, made their debut on Netflix, a hit series created by the Duffer Brothers, stars Wyoming. <laughs> My own writer, David Harbour, Finn Wolford, and Millie Bobby Brown. That happened back in 2016. Boy, does it seem like um, longer than that. Anyways, let's talk about some birthdays real quick. Heath Slater turns 20, uh, 38 today. Sorry about that. Uh, Taylor Kinney turns 40. Ray Toro, 43. Lana Parrilla. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, turns 44. Diane Kruger turns 45. Gabriel Iglesias turns 45. Brian Austin Green turns 48. Scott Foley turns 49. Adam Savage, what a savage, 54. He's from Mythbusters, just in case. And Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, he turned 60 today. Yeah, Forrest Whitaker. Think about that. If you're looking for a reason to celebrate today and go out and party and do all the kind of fun stuff, National Give Something Away Day. National I Love Horses Day. Boy, that means something different depending where you're at. National Tabioca Pudding Day. That sounds like a terrible thing. Uh, National Pet Fire Safety Day. Huh. Someone needs to look into that because I would like to have a better context of National Pet Fire Safety Day. Uh, what else? National Gummy Worm Day. Get to know your customer day. Well, that might that might be important. And then, of course, last but not least, be a dork day. I think we celebrate that day um, every day around here, at least so it seems. I don't know. You tell me. You are listening to something magical. <laughs> You're not. listening to the Rated R Safety Show. So let me talk real quick about my friends at the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Whether you have struggled with suicide yourself or or have lost a loved one, know that you're not alone. Hear about personal experiences from people in your local communities whose lives have been impacted by suicide and depression. For more information, you can go to their website, AFSP.org. That's AFSP.org. Or call 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-TALK. Or text the word TALK to 741741. Now listen, you might not be going through these struggles right now. But you might know of someone who is. It's always good to know all these resources of things because you could help others. And that's important. It's real important. That's not a joke as I say that. I would love for you to be able to help others out when it comes to this. Even if you could just give them direction because they might be in a crisis when you're not. Seriously, think about that for just a hot minute as we are talking about this, because you never know on when it's going to happen. You never know on when that impact moment might be what is going on with them, that you could just give data to be able to assist them. Think about it in that particular fashion. I'm Jeff Fire. I have a reputation for getting justice for the people. If it's there, I'll find it. I'm driven by the principle that right is right and wrong is wrong. And when I step into a courtroom, the other side knows that I am not there to settle. I'm there to win. So what's my edge? I was born for this. Okay, Figer Law. You can find out more information about Figer Law by going to FigerLaw.com or calling 1-800-A-WINNER. That's FigerLaw.com or 1-800-A-WINNER. There you go. Some more information always going about. Let's get into some more info before we get you the hell out of here today. Get the hell out of here. By the way, just in case, be a dork day because we talked about it earlier. Is it an annual excuse to wear goofy clothing, not brush your teeth, eat yucky food, and trip your over your own feet in other words just act like it's any other normal day around here uh that's for sure let's give you some whack facts real quick jumbo jets use more than four thousand gallons of fuel to take off caterpillars can have about four thousand muscles humans have only about 600 
The heart of a mouse beats 650 times per minute. Queen Elizabeth II was the Times Magazine's Man of the Year back in 1952. Chop suey was invented in New York. And an iceberg contains more heat than than a match. Think about that for a moment. Are, are you are you are you thinking about it? Are you thinking about it? Okay, there you go. Okay, let's go into some scoops of BS before we go. On average, a typical man spends six and a half days per year looking at himself in the mirror, or as Kanye West calls it, underachievers. A German company has, has created robots that can produce pole dance. The scientists say that it's fairly simple, and in fact, the most difficult part is programming the, for them for daddy issues. I've read that the average American sleeps with two pillows. This is just uh, just in Christina Hendricks is an average American. Experts say that humans may live on the moon within 30 years. Can't say how long to inhabit or to desolate Westland. Therefore, they always can go to New Jersey. Fact (laughs) fact of the day, uh, a study found that marrying an older man reduces a woman's lifespan, but marrying a younger man reduces it even more. In related news, Debbie Moore is on her way to find a deadbeat. Oh, my God. What the hell is going on? Oops! What did he just say? We at Safety FM don't always agree with the viewpoints of our hosts and guests. Now back to real safety talk on Safety FM. No, this is starting to make sense now. There's a singer that I really, really like, and she's dating a younger dude. I guess that makes sense now on what's the reason behind it. That's a whole other story for, I guess, for the for the Jay Allen in the morning show. Anyways, let's continue talking real quick. If you need a random joke for today, here's one for you. Gossip is when you hear something you like about someone you don't. Think about that. Uh, if you need something for for a phone for a phone call today, for a phone starter, try this one. Finish this sentence. I had a boss once who... If you need a conversation for the water cooler, try this. 